Hi, yeah, dudes and dames, and welcome. I am the Toxic Hamster. I was initially inspired to do this video while watching Computing Forever and his social justice horror stories. If you don't know him already, I strongly recommend you visit his channel. I think he makes really good content, and he does an amazing job on reporting on free speech and the creeping beast that is social justice. In context to this, you might want to watch the social justice horror stories to hear just how far this has spread and to what extreme it has a tendency to take already. Links will be in the description. First I want to mention. I ain't got no wall full of degrees and recommendations. And by no means do I claim to lay out the one and the only sworn truth. I won't bombard you with quotes and statistics. And I'll attempt not to diverse into outlandish rants on less important details. For now the only important thing is that I've done enough research to present this angle on this subject. And that is all this is. It's just another perspective, a thing to keep in mind, so to say. On political correctness and identity politics. When looking back in history at the various forms it has been applied, it has been used as a social weapon, so to speak, to silence popular opinion and turn the population onto each other specifically in regards to wrong thinking according to the community. In everything from religions and ideologies to communities, it has always been used as a way to ensnare people into a partially self-induced totalitarian system. It's basically a solid cornerstone in the actual process of building and keeping a tyranny. By partially self-induced, I mean the actual population is actively engaged in enforcing the guidelines not only towards themselves, but to their surroundings too. Individual people censor themselves both out of induced guilt or to directly avoid repercussions from their surroundings. It even goes to the extreme extent that they hold back due to what might later on become a problem against them. This is where the identity politics come into play, because the, by inducing this mentality of labeling people based on what they express, you not only stifle actual important discussions, but you dehumanize and legalize attack on anyone who expresses opinions which could be labeled bad thought. If you even provide people with the tools needed to enforce these guidelines through force, they will do so. To mention a side bonus of the identity politics, it is exponentially dividing amongst people. It can start out rather black and white, and before you know it, everyone is against each other all over the map, and no one actually gets anything done other than trashing their personal enemy of choice. You know, pro-life, anti-life, pro-censor, anti-censor, pro-social justice, anti-social justice, all this crap. You're a communist, you're not a communist. You're a Nazi, you're not a Nazi. You're a fucking Jew, you're not a fucking Jew. All while people are in fighting, the correctness push create a large group of people which have been convinced that reporting or silencing certain thoughts is for the good of everyone. And then it becomes hard to combat for the individual person. Basically an army of people willing to spy and report on each other and everyone else is an obvious outcome of this mentality. It has been used with great gain within the totalitarian religions such as 
pre-revolution Christianity and Islam. Here it is seen in its most basic form. You stray away from the guidelines and you're a legal target. And we have believers and non-believers. And the non-believers are dehumanized. The Nazi regime adopted and updated a lot of things from the communist Soviet. Among other, the use of inducing this mentality into the population, which in turn played a large part in creating the environment needed to put the rule into place and actively run it. On a side note on this, the German Uber class were especially impressed with how the Soviets had used uh, their kids to basically police their own parents. parents. So this was of course, of course perfected through uh, Hitler Jugend. Kids are extremely easy targets and extremely easy to convince that they're doing the right thing for their best interest and the best interest of everyone. And that is to me a big red flag when these things turn up in the institutions people entrust their kids to. During the Soviet and Nazi regimes, their identity and correctness methodologies were among the social engineering concepts which received a lot of focused attention, both in development and application, to ensure as great an impact as possible. It was a science to them, as it was to many before, but thankfully we can rest assured that we rescue those terrible people from falling into the wrong hands. Right. These days, I could imagine many associate political correctness with, say, not calling a black man a nigger, or the like morally questionable things. More and more people are jumping onto the bandwagon of supporting this, under this or the like assumptions. Personally, I could imagine a lot might be joining up to feel part of something bigger, or they feel that they at least are doing something good, maybe even just for the community and yell at something along with someone else. Either way, the misplaced trust and justification delivers their righteousness, and this makes them merciless proponents. Of course, this makes people think twice or think they better avoid the heat or keep their head down. And this is why I believe this is extremely Im important to always combat when, when this mentality is, is showing up because it, it will only grow bigger and bigger and bigger until the point where no one can breathe. It's always been like that and it always will be like that. One does not fight certain behavior by demanding it to stop that will most often provoke more of it. I know one thing for a fact. If I see a sign that says, don't step out on the grass, I'm gonna fucking step out on the grass, it's unavoidable. Had the same sign said, please remain on the path, I might actually have been the considerate one telling the kids to piss off the fucking grass. They're ruining the gardener's hard work. There are other, more logic ways to go about it than by demand or force. I want to end this with one quote though. A poem of an old pastor who lived through the Nazi regime and though it might sound a little outdated, the message is clear. When the Nazis came for the communists, I did not speak out. I was not a communist. When they locked up the social democrats, I did not speak out. I was not a social democrat. When they came for the Jews, I did not speak out, as I was not a Jew. When they came for me, there was no one left to speak out. Thanks for watching.